What's up boys and girls, and today, I know I said you guys could vote on the next video, but Scoot, he was very nice to let me borrow his deck, play it for about two weeks, I think it's been, um, it's been a lot of fun, I actually like the deck a lot, and um, he wants, I think I'm going to give him the cards back since I wanted to kind of uh, send it off with a little deck tech video here, so you can see the deck for yourselves, card for card. You know, if you want to build this kind of deck, and you'll have the knowledge of what to do. So I'm going to go through it. Hopefully I don't talk for too long, like I tend to have a habit of doing. Um, and let's move on and do that. So we're going to start with the one-drops here. Um, as you can see, there's Despise, taking away a creature or a planeswalker, one mana black. Um, it's pretty good. People do play a lot of um, creatures, so it usually almost always hits. Duress, Duress misses sometimes. I've had it miss. But it's still a good card. You want to get rid of the Wraths and Condemns and counter spells if you can. Inquisition. I've had it miss too, obviously, because it takes only things with 3 or less. And most people keep. Do, they do keep hands with like only 5 and 6 drops, even if you play this on turn 2. Um, but it's still very powerful and gets rid of like Soul Rings. Sometimes you get really lucky, you can take away those if you're on the play. And then Thought Seize. So, obviously, a very powerful card. It does cost you 2 life, but. I don't know why it's doing that. And then we have Enlightened Tutor. So Enlightened Tutor gets you a few spells that you probably want. Gets you a sword, Oblivion Ring. It can get you a Seal Primordium. It can get you... Um, what else is important? Phyrexian Arena. Um, there's no Soul Ring, as you guys can see. There's no Soul Ring in this deck. There's no Mana Crypt. There's no Mana Vault. There's nothing like that in this deck. So this deck is quite different to what you might be used to. Then we have Nature's Claim, and I'm um, honestly, most green decks should play this card. This card is so good. I'm always dropping a Soul Ring on turn one or a Mana Crypt, and I'm just like, please do not have Nature's Claim. Um, it's just such a powerful card. The four life is almost never relevant, and it's just it's just that much better than a Naturalize. Um, it's one mana. You can hit their Soul Ring on turn one, even if they're on the play and you're on the draw. And they don't get the benefit of untapping with Soul Ring on like a natural eyes, so um, I don't want to encourage people to play this card because it's actually that good. But you know, it's something to keep in mind, and I'm glad to see it in this deck. Path to Exile, self explanatory. You want to avoid playing this in early the early turns if you can, because you don't want to give them too much of an advantage. Source to Plowshares, obviously also very good. Also very good against Doran, since Doran doesn't have any power. So it's just a free removal spell against Doran. Vampiric Tutor. Um, the thing with the Tutor in this deck is sometimes I have Tutors like this and I don't really know what I want to get, what's the best card to get in the situation. Um, but it's definitely powerful to have it, and same with Worldly Tutor. I usually will just get um, a Dark Confidant with these cards if I can because he makes up for the card disadvantage that you play when you play the spell. And uh, he starts, they start to take over the game with the card advantage. So. Avacyn's Pilgrim, so we have a bunch of elves. Avacyn's Pilgrim, also Birds of Paradise. Also Birds of Paradise can attack for one damage when Doran's in play. Something to keep in mind. You can hold a sword, etc. Deathrite Shaman is pretty good. Um, the uh, exiling of the creature cards and such can matter. One thing you want to keep in mind is if you are playing a Tarmogoyf in your deck, and you don't want to make Tarmogoyf smaller by exiling their things that are going to make Tarmogoyf bigger, so you do have to think about what you're doing. But he does stop reanimation, snapcaster, stuff like that. You can you can hold on to him. And he also attacks for two with Doran. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Elves of Deep Shadow. You know, taps for black, and that's better than tapping for green. Finehorn Elves. Lena War Elves. And... Mother of Runes. Mother of Runes is pretty awesome. This card is so hard to beat sometimes. Um, don't get baited out by things. You gotta be careful with Mother of Runes. People will, like, kill your worst creature with a Doom Blade, and then they'll try to take out your other creature, but still, you get the two for one them for the most part. Sarah Ascendant. Obviously, the elephant in the room. 1v1's card is just stupid on turn one, turn two, even. Um, it's pretty much a card you never want to see your opponent play, but it's, it's in there. <laughs> An Arbor Elf, and the thing about Arbor Elf that I've never really been happy as is sometimes you do play um, non-basic. You play you play a mana that doesn't have like Command Tower, right? You have a Command Tower, a colorless land, 
some some amount of spells that don't you know that aren't that great and then you have arbor elf um, and you can't really get any benefit out of Arbor Elf. You have a colorless land. And uh, this is one card that I would consider cutting from the deck. I've never been so overly impressed with. It's annoying to use on Magic Online. If you've ever played a Magic Online with Arbor Elf, you'll know. There is a card coming out in M14 that I would probably would switch out for Arbor Elf. I mean, Arbor Elf does have advantages. Like, you can untap, like, um, let's say a Bayou or Savannah and tap for the other color that you might need, like a double white with Savannah, but there is this card, Elvish Mystic, so it's just another Llanowar Elf kind of variant that's coming out of 14 I would probably just replace it with that. Maybe not, maybe, but it's something to keep in mind if you were going to make this deck. And then we have our two drops, we have Gta. Obviously it's this really good card. There's a card window right here, I don't have to zoom in on all of them. Um, Usually you don't get GTA if you have a uh, searching out for artifacts, but it is an option. It does kill them faster with Doran because you can get plus four, plus four the next turn and hit them for nine damage with Doran, which is usually pretty good. Winter Orb, so the thing of my videos that I've posted so far is you haven't really seen any Winter Orb blocks. Um, Winter Orb, you get Doran out, you have a sword or something on him, or you just have a Dark Confine Winter Orb and a bunch of elves. You cast Winter Orb, and you know they've tapped out the turn before, and you have a bunch of elves, and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, you don't have like soul rings and stuff, so it's not like you can blow people out with it, but you actually can blow people out with it. Um, it's not like a fun card, and it's not a card that I would normally make a deck with, but uh, Scoot put it in the deck, and it's actually really powerful. Castigate, so it's a distress white black but you exile it instead of discarding it which is better and I think the white black is easier to get than double black for some reason and it's I've always liked casting this card I've never felt bad casting it on turn two um, demonic tutor it gets anything uh, the problem is knowing what you want to get because you can pretty much cast almost anything in your deck to either the next turn or the turn you play it because the curve is so low as you can see Himaturok card I'm not like really fond of but it's in there and it's really good and your opponents will get mad at you if you play this so like I said in another video this deck might not make you a lot of friends but it is definitely powerful abrupt decay does what it needs to do destroys anything three or less and it can't be countered so sometimes you can bait out a counter spell by your opponent not reading the card doesn't happen that often but it has happened Diabolic Edict, so get rid of whatever card that's blocking your door in. Usually most EDH decks won't have much out by turn 3 when you have door in out, and this just gets, gets it out of the way. Um, also good against Voltron Commanders, obviously. It's, um, you could consider playing, what is it, Chainer's Edict? It's the same cost, but it has flashback, but I mean, if you're not winning at that mana cost, when you're at 7 mana with the flashback, you're probably in trouble. So this is probably better as an instant. Go for the throat. Um, better than Doomblade, mostly in you know Commander. Most of the there's more black creatures running around than artifact creatures that you want to kill. I mean, Worm Coil is an exception, but Doomblading a Worm Coil doesn't really feel that good anyway. Or Zep Charm kills any creature, so it's a Vendetta. Um, what's this is a Vendetta, right? Is that the card I'm thinking of? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Vendetta. So this is oh non-black creature. Okay, well, Orza of Charm. Yeah, so this is better than Vendetta. I was gonna say if it was same exact wording as Vendetta. The other two modes I've never used them. I mean, you can use it to get back a Sarah Senator or Mother Runes or something. So it is relevant. Um, the Auras thing doesn't really matter. There really aren't any Auras in here, so still very good. Just killing whatever they have. Bitter Blossom. So, it does make your deck more aggressive. Um, I feel like the deck at the moment does not take advantage of Bitter Blossom all that much, and that's what I'm going to talk about right before I close up the video. But, you know, Bitter Blossom is a very good card. Sylvan Library. So, with Sylvan Library, me and Scoot play this deck differently. So, he made the deck, he said he doesn't really pay up front 8 life unless he really needs a card to dig for. Um, I feel like if you're playing Sylvan Library, you 
you shouldn't play this card unless you want to pay a life immediately. Um, the mana curve is really low, you can dump your hand really fast, and you're kind of on the aggressive plan. Like This deck will make you feel very anxious. Like You have to try to kill your opponent before they get to go over the top, and most EDH decks can go over the top with this deck. Um, but you just want to pay a life, you want to fill up your hand, you want to replace the card of Sylvan Library, so if you pay a life you're only getting up one card, so it's not that great, but um, it's a really amazing card, so um, I've probably almost killed myself with this card a few times, so you want to be careful. There isn't a ton of life gain in this deck, and there are a lot of effects that make you pay life, like Bitter Blossom, Orzhov Charm, um, you know, Vampiric Tutor, Thoughtseize, Add, you know, they will get there, but there's a lot of things that make you pay life, and there aren't a, way, a lot of ways to gain it. There's Don Car Dark Compound, this card is it's insane in this deck. You don't see a lot in a commander, partially because it's expensive, and another part is most people are playing like 8 drops, 7 drops, you know, their curves an average of 4 or more. Um, but this deck, the average average converted mana cost, let's look at it as it stands, 2.08 and you can see it's one, two, and three drops. So, very good, and that 2.0 weight does not include land, so it's actually lower than that if you consider all the lands. So you're, you're really only going to pay one life on average. Um, and he does hit for two. Um, he only hits for one when Doran's out, so if you drop this card on turn two, attack with him first, then play Doran, so you don't just hit for one. Like You gotta kind of think about what you're doing when you're playing this deck. You gotta teak, so um, Gaddock Teague does block a few of your spells, and I've seen Gaddock Teague, like, commander decks that actually have a lot more non-creature spells with four or more than this one, and it's kind of strange that they would do that, but, um, I've had an opponent message me in game, or, like, in the chat say Gaddock Teague was, like, the best card I could have ever played against him, um, I guess he had, he didn't tell me what cards he had, but this card just hoses people, and you don't realize how good it is until it's in play against you, and you can't even cast, like, can't cast your Jace, can't cast your Wrath, can't cast your Omniscience, um, pretty much a lot of different things, and it just hoses it completely. And Pride Mage is an amazing card, you know, it exalts up Doran, kills their Soul Rings, whatever they have, obviously. Uh, one of the best two drops that have ever been printed, and works very well in this deck. Ooze. So Ooze is actually getting reprinted in M14, which is kind of funny. Um, you gotta be careful though, because you do have Tarmogoyf, which is right down here, and you don't want to just eat everything. You kind of do, because you don't want your opponent to interact with their own graveyard. But you want, if you have a Tarmogoyf in, in your, like, on the battlefield, or you have a Deathrite Shaman where you might want to, like, drain them for life or gain life, um, you gotta be careful. But, getting bigger, and I've had some guy playing, not like heavy like recursion deck, but he had a lot of graveyard interactions and he was mad because I had like a scavenging ooze, I had a deathright shaman. He was just like, oh my god, there's so much graveyard hate. <laughs> and it wasn't really graveyard hate, it was just cards that are good and they interact with the graveyard. And then Stoneforge, Stoneforge always kind of feels dirty. Um, usually you get sort of Fire and Ice. If they're like a green black deck, you get sort of Feast and Famine. You can also get GTA. If they're like an elf deck, I would probably get like a GTA or a Sword of Fire and Ice, depending on how much mana you have and what's going on. But, uh, I, you know, I don't need to tell you this card is good, and it does hit for two with Dorian on the battlefield, the 1 2 Squire effect in play. And we got Tarmogoyf. So, Tarmogoyf, just a beat stick, he's cheap. You can cast your early duresses, thought seizes, make him big, fetch lands, obviously. And the fact that his toughness is always more than his power is good with Dorian. And then Voice of Resurgence, so this card is actually pretty good. I didn't think the 2-2 two, two would be all that effective, but it does change the way your opponents play. They play all the removal on their turn. Um, I've had people counter my spell, like Doran, the turn after I played Voice, and I got a, you know, I got a two, another 2-2 two, two for free. Um, it does make counter spells kind of really awkward. And, um... People are afraid to do things on your turn when you have it for obvious reasons. And, you know, when he dies, he does make a token, which can get bigger. So I like it. If you don't have the money for it, because I think this card is insanely expensive right now, then don't don't splurge for it. It's not like the deck can't operate without it, but if you have the tickets or the money in real life, then go for it. And it's still a Primordium, so I'm not convinced this would be better, not be better as a naturalize. 
Um, I do like the future shifted time frame or card frame a lot. Um, it does get tutored with what is it enlightened tutor, but I don't know if that's worth it. I guess the you know the cases where it's worth it, it's worth. You really want it to be tutored, you can tutor it. Um, but it might just be better as a naturalize, or I have down here you could put it in cross and grip, which you know can't be countered and it costs one more mana, but it's instant. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm not sure what's correct. I've never been impressed that still usually just crack it right away. So sometimes it would be better as an instant. And then three drops, crucible, and you'll see crucible is insane in this deck. It does cost three mana, so we're in a three mana slot right now. And you have to remember three mana is our commander. So we want all these three drops to be very good, because if you're going to cast them over your commander, uh, they should be very good. Sword of Feast and Famine untaps all your lands, which is always awesome, because you're always strapped for mana in this deck. You're tapping out almost every turn to cast like your creatures, your good enchantments, you know, your discard spells, and this just lets you get more and more value out of your turns. And obviously it makes them discard a card, and the protection ability and the power pumping, tough, tough power and toughness pumping is relevant. Sword of Fire and Ice, so protection, drawing a card, killing their little, little dudes that they can block with anyway. Oh, and then Tangle Wire, so I never got a video with this, but when I first started playing the deck before I made videos, I was getting Tangle Wire and um, Winter Orb on people constantly, and I just haven't had it happen recently, I just haven't been drawing it. But when you put Doran, you're ahead on, on the board, you have a Tangle Wire out, and you just crush your opponent, it just, it's so... It, so bad for them. Like most decks can't recover. Most decks are, you know, turn three, they're not like doing much. They might have played like a rampant growth, but they're just waiting to play their big spell and then you're hitting them for five a turn with your commander, maybe more. And you're tapping down all their land and it just crushes them. Maelstrom Pulse. Um, you've seen me get value out of it and you don't often get value, but I don't know if there's another card for three mana that says destroy tar target non land permanent. I mean, obviously be careful if you destroy something that you have the same name, like, uh, I don't know, if you happen to have, like, a uh, anything, like a sword, and you destroy their sword, it will kill yours with the same name. The card is all, all always very good, and it's good against, like, the token swarm. Some people do play a lot of tokens. Vindicate. Kill target that. Just kill it. Destroy it. Um, I love the art in this card, and I know you guys said it's with a skyship weatherlight, but it looks like a TIE fighter, so... I'm just going to pretend like it's a TIE Fighter. Uh, Beast Within. I haven't really played much with Beast Within. I mean, it's Vindicated Instant Speed, but it gives them a 3-3. And sometimes you don't want to be giving your opponents extra blockers, because they'll have like a 2-2, and you give them a 3-3, and now can, they can double block your door in. Um, but I'm sure it's good. I haven't played enough with it in this deck, but I can't imagine what you would put in over it. Dismember. I mean, this card's insane. Another card you're paying life for, but... You have one mana up, your opponent doesn't always... You know, they don't really expect this member. You don't see it a ton in Commander, which is kind of interesting, because it's a really good card. Mortify, Destroy Dark Creature, Enchantment. And then we have Putrefy, Artifact or Enchantment. It's the alternate art, or promo art, full frame, so you can't see the words, but you can hover. So they they both do kill creatures. This one, they can't be regenerated, right? Yeah. Putrefy doesn't let them be regenerated. Mortify does. They're both very good. Kind of disappointed they didn't reprint this in Dragon Maze. <clears throat> um, Dark Tutelage, so it's Phyrexian Arena, but costs you more life, but less black mana. Um, I, there has been cases where I've had this card, Phyrexian Arena, and um, Dark Confidant out. You're just paying like 5 life a turn, but it's just awesome. <laughs> uh, the card is good. I'm surprised people don't play this more. Well, actually, maybe I'm not, because it can really hurt. Most decks are playing huge spells. But it's nice that there's a deck out here like this one that can take advantage of it. Oblivion Ring gets rid of anything. You don't even say what can be tutored with uh, the Enlightened Tutor, right? Yeah. Firexing Arena, insane. Um, sometimes you need to see what your opponent has if they have counter spells. That, you know, they'll play, you'll be on the play, they'll hold up two blue mana, you don't know what they have. So you play um, Phyrexian Arena to like, get out their counter spell. Maybe they're on the play and they have a hinder or they have a spell crumple. Um, you kind of want to bait them out with these kind of spells because like a control deck really can't let you resolve these. So you try to bait them out with these these cards. And then Liliana. Liliana's just really good. 
I don't think I've ever lost the game when I title it. Maybe one. Because my opponent just got a better board, but... It's just, it's really good. Um, I don't think I've ever got to ultimate. I think people always concede before that happens. Eternal Witness, also just good recursion. Fiend Hunter is actually a lot better than you would think you'd be. Because it's kind of a tempo aggro, tempo aggro control. And you just want to temple your opponent out, take away their threats, stop them from being able to cast anything powerful, and this helps you get rid of whatever blocker they may have. Um, and then they have to use a removal spell on this rather than like, your Doran or your guy with your sword. Silver Blade Paladin, obviously really good with Doran. Hits them for 10. Um, and it's pretty awesome. And then Knight. Knight is awesome. Like, if your opponent has a Maze of Ith, you have a Knight, you just strip mine or wasteland their Maze of Ith. Um, you know, obviously thins your deck out of lands. You can do a ton of stuff with this card, and it's really good. And then we have Cataclysm. So this is a card that's not played. I think I've seen it played against me once. But you can just blow people out with this. It's kind of like the Tangle Wire Winter Orb kind of thing. You just want to get ahead with Doran, maybe have a sword on him. Um, and just Cataclysm. And they, like, ramp. They spent their whole turns putting out mana artifacts and ramping. So they just spent, like, rampant growth. You know, Sky Shroud claim, and then you just kill all their land, and yeah, killing land is fun. <laughs> and then Elspeth. So Elspeth, I have a habit of misclicking with Elspeth. I want to jump plus three, plus three, and flying my Doran, and I'll just put a stupid token into play. Can't tell you how many times that's happened. Um, just misclicking, and you know, the minus state is obviously very good. And then Ad Nauseam. So I've had played with Ad Nauseam. Sometimes you have it in your opening hand, and you're just like, wow, I'm never going to cast this card. I think it's probably replaceable with any kind of other cards. Not sure what you replace it with, but um, usually you're ahead on board and you don't need to cast it, or you're behind and you don't have the mana for it. Because getting to five mana on this deck is um, usually you're playing other things. You're equipping your swords. You're playing your dark confidants. You're you know you're doing things other than spending your whole turn to cast ad nauseum. It is one of those things that you know. You don't pay as, as much, that much life because your spells are cheap, but if you've been spending the whole game paying life for every little effect you have, uh, this can kill you, so you have to be careful. Um, I've had it probably win me a game before because I think I eternal witnessed it once and cast it twice because I was really digging for answers to my opponent's board, but uh, sometimes you'll just draw a ton of elves and lands and it's just not that good. So I'm not really sure to think about this card. I haven't played with it a ton, but I... It's something I would consider cutting for something different. Um, and then we have Sigarda. Sigarda is really good. Um, people have no mercy out against you. And you can't find a way to deal with it. You can play Sigarda. Um, you can Green Sun Zenith for her. She's just really good on her own. And she also does hoard, hold your swords very, very well. And she's got sweet art. I just really like her art. Yeah, she's pretty good. It's going to get really insane once the new commander rules are in play. I mean, the new rule changes where you can't Phantasmal Image and kill her anymore. I just, I just don't know how you're going to deal with her unless you can Wrath. Um, Grin Sun Zenith. A lot of options. Usually you'll get like a Kosali Pride Mage, Gaddic Teague, sometimes Sigarda if you have a lot of mana and the game's going late. Sigarda's like one of your ways to go over the top, almost kind of literally flying over the top. <laughs> um, you can get, oh, another thing you'll do this on turn one, you'll get a Dryad Arbor. So that's really good. Um, if you... You know, you can get elves too, but it doesn't happen all too often. Or you can get like a scavenging goose if they have graveyard you're trying to get rid of. So, uh, very good card. It's not going to get any big, huge primeval titans or anything, but. And then we have a uh, mind twist. So, Scoot originally had Tide Hollow Sculler in the deck instead of mind twist. Um, I never really was impressed by Sculler. It always made you kind of feel anxious. Like, what if they remove it at instant speed and then they blow me out with whatever spell that I took? Um, there's no way to blink Sculler, so you can't really abuse the effect. Um, and every time I've drawn Mind Twist, I've always been, like, happy to play it for even two or three, and not kill their whole hand, but just that random. The whole th the whole fact that it's random, just, it's just, it's just another hand to Turok, really, so. I would probably cut the Sculler, keep the Mind Twist. The Sculler's 2-2 two, two never really matters, and you don't want to get it in combat, because you don't want to give them their card back. But it's, it's also an option that you can play. All right. Uh, how long have we been talking for? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, we'll try to go fast. So we have the lands. So, there was a land. He had this in the deck, Pendlehaven, and I've never really felt like Pendlehaven did anything. It makes your elves like a 2-3, but that doesn't usually matter. 
and it's okay, but it's not great. Um, and it doesn't tap for anything but green, obviously. So we put in a Volrath Stronghold, and I haven't really ever used the effect. And it is colorless, so something that could be bad. Both are legendary, which is not going to matter as much once the new rules change, but I'm not really sure what's better. I, I would try just Volraths, because um, it can be very good, obviously. And cut the Pendlehaven. It's just never really... If you're not playing an Infect deck, I don't really know what this really does for you. I guess it can bash through tutus, but it doesn't happen all too often. Alright, the lands. Command Tower, Wasteland, Strip Mine, Crucible, obviously very good. You need to kind of have Wasteland though in this deck because you are dealing with like Maze of Iths, Core Havens. Uh, people do play the Bounce Lands, you know, this crushes them. Flooded Strand, Blue Delta, Fudge Lands. We have Horizon Canopy, which is pretty awesome. It's also good with your Crucible. Um, lets you cash in. Sometimes you get flooded in this deck for whatever reason. You're not running that many land. 36, but you do get flooded. And lets you cash in the land. Plus it does have sweet art. People walking on a leaf. Savannah has all the dual lands from Alpha or Alpha Beta dual lands. Um, it has all the all the Ravnica shock lands in the colors. Stirring Wildwood. Never really... I've activated one time um, a lot because Pun had like a No Mercy and I had a Crucible so I could just keep attacking him with this and get it back with my crucible. So that was good. Sun Petal Grove, Temple Garden. I do like that he has the old Temple Garden. I like it better. Fetch Land, Wooded Bastion. So these cards can be tricky to play with. They are really good when you have one of the colors, but when you don't and you can't cast an elf on turn one, it kinda sucks, but um, they are good. I like them. Fetid Heath, the same kind of land, the Filter Land. Chapel, Marsh Flats, Scrub Land. Bayou, Overgrown Tomb, Twilight Mars, so you got all the filter lands, all the fetch lands, all the duels that come into play untapped. He has Shizo. So Shizo can be good giving your guy fear, get him in. You just want to get Doran through and this helps you do that. Swamp, Urborg. Urborg, you know, it can be really good. If you look at the three drop slot, there's a lot of double color cost and all the colors black, double white, double green, mixed white black black green, so Urborg helps you fix that. Um, and you, it does help the colorless lands actually do something. Dried Arbor, um, gotta be careful with rats, obviously. People play Lightning Bolt, um, playing a turn one Dried Arbor on its own kinda sucks, but Green Sun's anything out is totally worth it. Also, you can fetch it with a Forest Fetch Land and Chump Block, or end of turn do it, and then like attach a sword to it and like surprise them. That's always a good Okina. I always forget to activate this card, um, but it can make Doran's clock faster by a turn, so it's worth playing. Because Doran only hits for 20 by in 4 turns, but this will let you get to 21 more easily. Okay, we have Maze of Ith. Um, this card's been very good. you think in an aggro deck it wouldn't be, but when your opponent has like, a Worm Coil out, you don't want him to gain life with the Worm Coil, and you can Maze their Worm Coil in. Uh, it's pretty nice, plus it also you know, if they have protection from, like, your colors, this will stop you from dying. It also helps with, like, Voltron, Rafik decks, things like that. I actually won big game against Rafik last night. Strip Mine. Kills anything. You have a Mount Hollow. Obviously, this card is also really good. Um, sometimes you just want to use it multiple times a turn. Just bash all your creatures, but I like it a lot. Mox Diamond. <sighs> Box Diamond. Sometimes you get insane starts, sometimes you draw it off the top and it's awful. Sometimes you only have two lands and a Mox Diamond, it doesn't help you a ton. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I, it does help you play a turn to Doran, so I see why it's in the deck. And, so, suggestions. So, what, what what's bad about this deck? It is bad against, um, graveyard, like, reanimation. You don't have much to stop it sometimes, um, besides the creatures. It's bad against like a swarm of tokens and board stalls. Your opponent just plays a ton of creatures and you don't have the removal. I was thinking about what we can do to make the deck better. Um, we're playing Bitter Blossom, but we don't we don't really kill people through fairy tokens ever, and I don't know this could be cut. Um, unless you're playing maybe a skull clamp, because skull clamp helps with Elspeth, Bitter Blossom. It helps you cash in your elves when you don't need them anymore. Um, it doesn't combo with your general, obviously, because it decreases toughness, and Doran wants high toughness. But I might consider playing it if you were thinking about, you know, something else that you might want to try. It also does 
you know, get fetched with Stoneforge Mystic. Something to keep in mind. And then Rancor. So the Rancor, if you notice, it's a really good card. It's good for you if you have a Voltron General in the green. But what's the problem with Rancor? Well, Rancor includes his power, which Doran does not care about your power at all. Um, it would be just used solely for giving your guys trample, and it, you know, it can help like a Silver Blade Paladin on its own when Doran's not out because he's tucked or he's countered, or helps your Elspeth or Fairy tokens. So, two cards consider playing. Um, if you're having, it kind of depends on what you're playing against. If you're playing a lot of token swarms, like you know, what's her name, Tristani, and this will help you get through a little bit better. But anyway, that's a deck I've been speaking for a long time. It's a very good deck. I'm not sure it needs changes, but I figured I would just suggest some to Scoot and to people watching. Uh, let me know what you think of the deck. So hopefully you enjoyed the series. Um, probably even the deck back, so I might try to record one more before I give it back. And yeah, let me know if you have a deck you want, you want to let me borrow and play, and I'll definitely do that. So, anyways, uh, the voting for that next general actually was really, really close. That's why I couldn't quite pick one, because there was actually some that were tied. So I was kind of waiting for the tie to smooth out, but it quite hasn't gotten there yet. So if you haven't voted yet, I'll put the link. You can vote on the next video. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.